The story of Infinity Systems dates back to 1968, when the company was founded in LA by Arnold Nudell, John Ulrich, and Kerry Christie. Before that, Nudell worked at Litton Industries, where he was developing guidance systems for fighter jets, and he somehow based some of his speaker design on the very guidance systems he was working on. It may sound weird, but it somehow worked, and their first loudspeaker called Servo Static One, based on this tech, was way ahead of its time and an instant hit. At least in iron circles, the bloody thing cost 2100 US dollars, which is over 18,000 adjusted for inflation. There's certainly nothing normal people would get home as a speaker system. They used some innovative materials such as polypropylene as a driver cone, mylar for diaphragm, or neodymium magnet. They also built the world's first class D amplifier or world's first low mass tone arm. Since then, Infinity created some extraordinary loudspeakers, some of which are the IRS-5, one of the world's most acclaimed loudspeakers of all time, or IRS Beta, etc. However, in 1983, Infinity was acquired by Harman Kardon, and eight years later, Nudell left the company and founded Genesis Technologies. Since then, Infinity followed the download spiral, and nowadays, they produce cheap, low-end crap mainly used in cars. It's pathetic and quite sad. Back in their glory days, Infinity named most of their iron speakers after Greek alphabet letters. Beta, Sigma, Gamma, Delta, and of course Kappa. First Kappa speakers were made in 1987, and there were a couple of different models, differentiated by numbers 5 to 9. The higher the number, the bigger, the better, and more expensive the speakers are. These first original Kappa 9s were 5-way speakers that cost 3,000 US dollars, which is about 8,000 today. They were known for being a bit harsh on the amplifier. Well, a bit harsh may be an understatement, they were called amp killers. Their impedance can drop well below 1 ohm, which means they draw a lot of current which puts a lot of stress on the amplifier, and some amplifiers can struggle quite a lot delivering the power to the speakers, and in some cases the amplifier can even end up the top. The Carpos 9.2 are a bit nicer to the amp, but still not too friendly. They were introduced in 1993 and cost 5,000 US dollars, which is about 10 and a half nowadays. Speaking of nowadays, I bought these for 1,500 quid, which is about 1,800 dollars, but you can find a pair for as low as 1,000 pounds. Mine look pretty much like new, they are rather tall and heavy they are, 53 kilos in one and a half meter tall cabinet. Two enormous 12-inch bass drivers made of carbon dominate the bottom of the front panel, mid-bass drivers right above made of the same material, above there is the infamous polydome mid-driver, and the last in the line is the Emmett's tweeter. The polydomes, even though brilliant, are notorious for degrading over time. After a while, they turn yellow and eventually crack. Emmett, on the other hand, is pretty much indestructible. Emmett stands for Electromagnetic Inductance Tweeter, and it works something like this. Today widely accepted as the most musically accurate high-frequency reproducer in the world, the Emit uses a tiny ultra-thin planar diaphragm made of Kapton, an exotic aerospace synthetic combining low mass, high strength, and high temperature stability. It has the lowest mass of any tweeter. A thin voice coil is photo-etched right onto the Kapton diaphragm, suspended between arrays of special rare earth neodymium magnets, the strongest magnetic material known. 40% stronger than ferrite used in most speakers. The diaphragm is driven from both sides over its entire surface, so it responds with incredible speed, accuracy, and true push-pull motion control. This combination of low mass and intense magnetic field enables the emit to respond with great speed and accuracy to the most delicate subtleties of the high frequencies, revealing an amazing clarity and transparency to the musical reproduction. You can hear the feather touch of a brush on a cymbal, or the richness of a trumpet's harmonics more clearly than you've ever heard them. Specifications pretty much never reflect if you'll fancy the sound or not, but let's have a gander at what Carpos can do. Frequency response ranges from 27Hz to 35kHz. For that, you need an amplifier rated at least 60 watts. the more the better, of course. Impedance is 4 ohms, and with extended bass response, it drops to 1.6 ohms. That means, if your amplifier is not powerful enough, this switch located at the back of the speaker can help a bit. There are two positions, extended and normal. According to the manual, the extended position is the default position, and it enables full-range bass. 
The normal position cuts off the lowest bass frequencies to get a load of an amplifier. So technically extended should be called normal and actual normal should be called something else, cut off or safe or something like that. It helps an amp to breathe and the bass gets a bit cleaner. Speaking of which, if you want to fully utilize their potential, they need a bit more power than your average speakers. I mean they need power to open up, they're not bad when you're listening at very low volume levels, however you need to give them a bit more to sound excellent. I don't mean to listen to some extremely loud music, 70dB is where they sound almost perfect. That being said, they're not suitable for very small rooms. Also, if you live in a block of flats, Kappa speakers can be a bit uncomfortable for your neighbors. They may not hear what you're listening to, but they can certainly feel it. Pretty much all iron speakers support biamping, and Kappas are not different. Unfortunately, I can't test it at the moment. I don't have two same working amps I could use for that. A little bit bland to my taste, with no substance. They're not ugly, but certainly not as pretty as the first Kappas, just ordinary looking speakers. They may look ordinary, what is, however, extraordinary is what comes out of the speakers. To describe the sound, I'm not gonna use a bunch of nonsensical audiophile adjectives, I'll try to describe it in my own words and compare it to the sound that some other speakers produce, namely Yamaha NS1000M and Infinity IRS Sigma. The carpals produce very deep bass thanks to two massive 12 inch drivers. Very low frequencies can be felt through your body and unfortunately for your neighbors, even through the walls. If you listen to your music at normal listening levels, it's actually a rather nice feeling which can't be achieved by speakers like NS1000Ms. The bass is clear, but not as clear as the NS1000Ms or Sigmas produce. It's certainly much deeper than that of the NS1000Ms and just a tad deeper than that of the Sigmas, which is quite a feat on the Sigmas side since they've got only one bass driver. Mids are clear, detailed and rather spacious, again, compared to other speakers, both NS1000 amps and Sigmas are as clear as Scarpas, however, Yamas lack a bit in detail and Sigmas are a little bit better. Space-wise, the NS1000 amps got a bit smaller soundstage, while the Sigmas got larger. If properly set up, you won't hear the sound coming out of the speakers, the speakers just disappear and you can enjoy almost lifelike music that's coming from behind the speakers. Eyes are very crisp and detailed, yet not too squeaky or uncomfortable. Both the Sigmas and NS1000Ms seem to be on the same level. If you want to experiment, and you should, you can fine tune the sound with these pots. The change in the sound is quite subtle, but it may help a bit if you for instance feel the bass is not deep enough. Instrument separation is brilliant, you can clearly hear the instruments are not blended together as some other speakers make them. I take the NS1000Ms are on par and the Sigmas do a tad better job. The sound overall is warm and very pleasant, like it's caressing your eardrums even at higher listening levels. They're very similar to the Sigmas, the NS1000Ms are way too neutral sounding for my taste though. Unfortunately it's useless to let you listen to any comparison, the entire chain, my mic, YouTube and finally your system will change the outcome substantially. The Carpos are blood impressive speakers, I love how they sound. They're not suitable for smaller rooms, they sort of compress the soundstage and the speakers don't open up as they do in larger rooms. They're not as clear sounding as Yamaha NS1000Ms or IRS Sigmas, the soundstage is certainly larger and nicer than Yamaha's, but a bit worse than Sigmas. The NS1000Ms sound very neutral, which is their biggest advantage, but not for me, I fancy a bit warmer sound coming out of the Carpos or even better sounding Sigmas. The Sigmas sound very similar, but overall a bit cleaner, with larger soundstage and more detailed mid, moreover the Sigmas certainly look much nicer. The Carpos 9.2i are certainly worth the money they sell for nowadays, you can only find anything better for the price made today, or twice or three times as much for the matter. If you've got a good and powerful enough amplifier, you've got enough room and you don't want to spend an arm and a leg for some new speakers, the Carpos can certainly satisfy your needs. Make sure the polydomes are in a good condition though. If they're not, you can buy a replacement from ScanSpeak. Not sure about how accurate the sound is compared to the original though. And that's it for this review. If you've got something to say, see you down below in the comments. Ta-ta.